first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. For those who have uh, followed me for the last year and a half, um, you know that I've done actually a whole thing last year on Halloween and the satanic rituals in which that occurs during this time period. On Halloween, which is October the 30th through the 31st, actually you know, for the 29th, and for those four days, 30, 31st, 1st, 2nd, those four days in particular, um, there's satanic rituals in which that takes place of missing children, um, sex with children, which is molestation, um, um, sex vaginally and anally um, take place, particular rituals, oral, um, sexual rituals. Um, these things are done so um, by the so-called um, elite in order to stay in power. And for those who are demonically possessed, which are the elite, they are psychopaths or sociopaths by definition. And me being a social um, sociologist or a social worker, um, that is also the conclusion which I've come to after over 20 some odd years of research and study. Um, you know, um, outside of school, um, as well as also um, graduating with a sociology degree, um, I can definitely tell you that um, these things are true. You know, we even had a um, detective to come to school when I was in school, I think it was my sophomore, junior year. Matter of fact, I think it was my junior year. I was um, class president, junior class president. And he came um, to the Lyceum Committee, which I was also a part of and a um, and student head of. And he began to break down these missing children during this time period and how he linked it to satanic activity, you know, in which that um, – we spoke about, like I said, over a year ago, or well, actually almost a year ago. Um, so, you know, these things are true, so we're going to put together, we have these programs in which that is going to kind of act. So this Saturday is going to be um, in Norfolk, well, Virginia Beach area, in which that is going, it's called the Journey to Gan, all right? So for those in the Virginia area, come on out and check it out. Like I said, go to the Facebook and see the uh, flyer. 
as well as also um, email us. Email us at royalhouse777 at gmail.com. That's royal, R-O-Y-A-L, house, O-H-O-U-S-E, 77737 at gmail.com. So that's royalhouse777 at gmail.com. Um, email us if you're interested. And then also for those in the North Carolina area, because our family from Virginia is going to come down to our event that Sunday. So this um, again going on Sunday, and it's going to be in North Carolina. So for those who want more information, you can give us a call or email us. All right, so um, if you want the number, the number is 252-257-3588. That's 252-257-3588. And that's for anyone in the surrounding area. So we're talking about North Carolina, Virginia, um, you know, Baltimore, D.C., on down to South Carolina. All right, so come on and check us out. If you're in these areas, check us out. All right, it's going to be something for the children, bring your children. Um, if you come in, wear white, you know, um, you know, bring some fruit, you know, and we're going to have a good time. So check us out. All right, um, so we went over the cruise, we went over um, the journey to Gan, and we got one more thing to talk about before we get into the issue tonight, which is um, also the National Motor Club, uh, for those in which that need benefit, all right? Um, we suggest that you get up with us um, concerning that, all right? As a matter of fact, um, Put my wife on and she'll go into a little, a little bit more detail right quick. Wow. Um, um, the National Motor Club, I really love the National Motor Club because it, it gives you unlimited roadside assistance. Also, um, 60% off on glasses as well as prescriptions. So most of us use herbs, but sometimes our families don't. So, you know, just to help and make things a lot easier, you can even use your card for your mom's prescriptions or auntie's prescriptions, 60% off, you can't beat that. Also, with the cruise to um, to Mexico, you can get $500 utilizing the National Motor Club as far as a rebate for traveling. I mean, it really pays to ha have benefits, to be covered if, God forbid, something happens. Um, one of the sister's husbands was in his land transport, got pulled over, well, she called around and she had forgot that she had National Motor Club. She called around. She was like, "Look, we need to um, pull up a thousand dollars so we can get my husband out bells, bonds." And I'm like, "Don't you got National Motor Club?" Yeah, because <laughs> you can get them pulled out of there as long as it's under twenty five thousand. She was so excited. So, um, so National Motor Club sent her the paperwork and he'll be out before the week is up. So I'm just really, really excited about adding on. And you really can't beat the fact that it's eighteen dollars a month. Now, for your children, you can either choose the $9 a month plan or the $14 a month plan. Um, it's really something that you definitely should check into. And then on top of that, you can you can sell it to other people, and there's a promotion going on, $8,000 that you'll receive. Um, if you get over 263 people underneath you in two months, now y'all have to know how easy that is. Um, I'm just really, really excited. If you're interested and you want to be a part of that team, then please call us. The number again is 252-257-3588. Now, also, more, you know you need your silver and your gold. There's a program that we're in. It's group purchasing gold and silver. I've already gotten $4,000 out of it. I'm just, I'm just so excited. We know we need silver. We know we need gold. And if you have $50 or $100 and know four other people that also would like to accumulate gold and silver, then use those numbers. And um, I'm going to give the phone back to the God, and I just appreciate y'all listening. Peace and so much love. All right, so that's um, finish our um, advertisement commercials. <laughs> so um, let's get into um, the metaphysics of life. Let's deal with some areas here. Um, life itself, um, when you're talking about life, you're talking about a universal component known as kundalini. All right, kundalini, in which that is known as the Mother Goddess Principle, is the original principle. So before we masculize it or 
turned it into a patriarchal um, type of thing, um, um, it All right. If you have a technical difficulties, like you said, we are navigating, so we still want to get this information out to you. Hopefully, you will, so hopefully you will receive it in um, good measure. And um, let's continue. All right. So we talk about the life principle, and the life principle itself is called Kundalini within the Sanskrit. Sanskrit teachings teach that the name of it is called Serpentine within the English transliteration is called Serpentine Fire. All right. Now that is Kundalini personified. Another name for Kundalini is prana, all right, prana, that's P-R-A-N-A, um, a, all right. Prana um, is a indo Kush word, but it's derived from ancient Kemet or Egypt, and it's known as um, also as Ra. The Kundalini within ancient Kemet is known as Sekmat or, or Sekum, all right. Shekum or, Shekum or Sekmat means power. All right. Um, Sekhmat is the feminine um, energy of Ra. All right. Now Ra was the Odin god, but his countersort was Rayat. So actually, Sekhmat is the image of Rayat. All right, because Sekhmat was sent down to Earth. All right. Um, so that is symbolic to the personification of the energy within each and every one of us, in which that Ra or Rayet sent Sekhmat down to become the personification of humans. Now, how do you know this happens? Because allegedly um, Ra wanted to destroy the humans, just like God did within the Bible um, before Noah. He wanted to destroy humanity, and accordingly, of course, Humans was making too much noise, you know, and being too um, boastful and, and all these negative traits began to develop. Now, what happened was is that obviously that was lost. That was due to the loss of consciousness. Uh, we spoke about a week or so, almost two weeks ago. Now, uh, we did a lecture at um, Norfolk State University in which that we was breaking down the fall of man. Man means the mind, how the mind fell in consciousness. And there's seven states of consciousness. And we fell from infinite consciousness into super consciousness, excuse me, into magnetic consciousness, into super consciousness, into self consciousness, then into life consciousness, and then inter, intrapersonal consciousness, and then interpersonal consciousness. So we fell seven stages in consciousness. All right, and those seven stages are symbolic to the seven chakras, in which that the Kundalini at one time resonated at the crown. And if you ever seen the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics or Metumeta, you would see what's known as the sacred words of God. Um, you would see on the drawings a depiction a pine cone sitting on top of the um, head of the humble or sincere one. All right or those who are aspiring to become netur, or, net, or part of the neturu, or neturet, all right? Um, so what happened was is that this pine cone symbolizes the activation of the pineal gland, and the pineal gland wants you to sit near the top of the head, not where it sits now in the center of the brain itself, all right? Um, you can sit more towards the top. It actually was the size at one time of a... Um, Half a dollar, all right? And, of course, it is shrunken um, beyond the size of a quarter to a nickel to a dime. Now it is actually the size of a kernel of corn or a pea um, or a grain of rice now in most people. So you can tell that based on us using our lower nature, the blood flow to the brain area, which that used to engulf that particular area of the pineal gland, in which that gave us activation and connection to the spiritual world, 
it wasn't just the pineal gland. It was also to the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus gland, and the thalamus gland. Um, those areas in the brain is known as um, the four eyes or the four spiritual centers, all right? Now, if you get a book called Nutricize by Dr. Layla Africa on page 15, um, XD, which is the Roman numeral, you will see an actual portion of the brain blown up to the equivalent size of a car. And hovering over the pineal gland is a galaxy-like cloud. It actually looks like a UFO. All right? So this is like beaming up sky. So when the pineal gland is fully activated, those, those particular eyes or spiritual centers are activated. Um, it actually um, beam up the Kundalini energy, which is the energy in which that personifies you, in which that um, you are made up of, in which that is your actual life force energy, all right, personified. So you are the universe personified. In other words, you are the macro, you are the microcosm of the macrocosm, all right? So um, this Mother Goddess principle um, has fallen, all right, from the crown chakra, which was the highest seat, you know, right, or within man, that is, because you have other seats outside, uh, but that was the highest seat in man, hence the mind. Man is not talking about gender in this case. Um, and that energy fell to the pituitary gland, which by seven we develop our personality. And usually um, seven more years later, we go through puberty. And if um, and the pineal gland becomes, uh, begins to start going through atrophication. In other words, it begins to sh start shrinking because we're no longer using it at that particular moment or time because the pituitary gland helps with HGH, which is human growth hormone. And that human growth hormone is what takes us through puberty. All right? In other words, that gives us the ability in order to change from boys and girls to men and women. All right, a woman. Now, um, in other words, it begins to start developing more testosterone and more estrogen. All right, testosterone within the males and more estrogen with the females, in which that takes us through that particular um, growth spurt or period. All right. Um, now, after puberty. The pineal gland is supposed to come back into position as the master gland of the body. However, if you're focusing on the law in nature and just focusing on the aspects of sex or, you know, lust, greed, jealousy, or envy, and you, um, and these particular attributes is what you exhibit the most on a daily basis then the pineal gland never comes back into control as the master gland of the body. So it begins to continue to be atrophied until it becomes the size of a grain of rice. And often by that time, it's calcified. Now, if you get African origin of biological psychiatry by Dr. Richard King, MD, he states specifically in there that 5 to 15% Africans have calcified pineal gland. 20 to 35 percent Asian and 60 to 80 percent European. All right, anyone with a pineal gland calcification, and now, now of course, I believe that it has actually um, heightened and increased because of the detriment of the air. The air itself is the component in which that sparks the life force within each and every one of us in order to stay healthy and it is now being laced, the air itself is being laced with chemtrails in which that has high amounts of aluminum, barium, stromium, um, titanium, um, as well as also bacterial spores, in which that is known to cause um, mangelin, all right, in which that is like the flesh-eating bacteria disease in which that started um, in the 90s, okay? Um, in other words, that becomes the catalyst in order to stop the manifestation of us moving from the um, as fourth dimensional beings into the fifth dimension. 
That is part of it, is the breath. Second is the food. Well, excuse me, first, let's, let's get to the water. Water is more, all right, um, we are 75% water totally, 90% water in the brain, 85% in the spine, um, 82% in the liver, all right? So we are predominantly an aquatic being. So within the water, especially if you drink the sink water or tap water, is fluoride. Fluoride by the Nazis by World War II, before World War II, was actually used, um, you know, on the populace, you know, um, on the Jews as well as also the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, Catholics, as well as also um, blacks by the Nazis in order to test um, how fluoride interacts with the brain. And it's come to find out that fluoride calcifies the pineal gland and makes one docile, all right, makes one dumb. So not only, um, and also let me get back to the um, controls because being that we have aluminum, we found out that high amounts of aluminum causes Parkinson's disease, depression, and Alzheimer's. So it deals with um, interfering with brain um, electrical magnetic components also. In other words, between the dendrites and the synapses, it cuts that spark of life off, that, that connection or that communication between these particular um, brain components. All right? So everything that is going on is affecting the brain. So that's the air, the water. Now we go to the food. 20 years ago, genetically altered food did not exist, but it does now. So if you're looking at genetically altered food or what is called Franken food, GMOs, genetically modified organisms, and the word organism means life, living. So whatever this is, is genetically, is there to genetically modify your life. And now over 90 some odd percent of the supermarkets, some say as high as 98% of the supermarkets has these particular GMOs in it. If you don't see a particular package in which that states that it don't have GMOs, and I give you some good products in which that, you know, don't have GMOs, um, you can get um, Bolt House, which are the juices, they specifically say on it that they do not have GMOs listed um, or GMOs in their particular product, all right? Um, and there's other juices in which they say so. If they don't say it, they do not get it. That means that they have GMOs in it and it's just not listed. So you want to make sure that you're getting products in which that uh, particularly states otherwise. Next. The Jews aren't too much into this genetically modified food. So some of their products are safe also. Um, you have to get what is known as um, foods that are called kosher, in which it has a circle and a K in the center, or has a U, or has a UV. All right? The U symbolizes the union of the rabbis, in which that means that it was prayed over. All right? Um, the Uva, or the Uva, um, um, that's, the, that's the name of it. So you will want to get these uh, particular products um, listed um, as such, all right? And, of course, you know, um, if you're dealing with Islamic law, then, of course, if you find um, the H in which that gives with halal, all right? The more need to start uh, producing food in which that we have um, an M on it, a circle in an M for, um, for um, Moorish, <laughs> all right? Um, so, uh, of course, that you know that's a joke, but you know, hopefully, y'all laugh. But anyway, when you're talking about these particular items in which that is dealing with your life component is being interfered with by these particular corporations or industries. 
Now, we know that the one in which that is being tailored towards the food is Masanto, in which that Rockefeller is Rockefeller control. But we say that all of it is Rockefeller control here in the Western Hemisphere, and then globally is through the Rothschild and other constituents of the so-called 13 Illuminati top family, or what we call the psycho blood claim, Killuminati, or Killuminati. All right? Um, we did a tape on that about 10 years ago, and we said I broke that information down. Brother Panic always um, speaks about it, um, how that was one of the tapes in which that sparked him and that he enjoyed. But that was old information. That was information that we was dealing with almost 20 years ago. You know, I know 20 years ago when we started talking about the Illuminati, ain't nobody believed us. Nobody could believe how it would be a small constituent could actually control um, the media, entertainment, education, sex, labor, law, politics, religion. Nobody could believe that this, these particular areas of facets of life could be controlled. But yet, Lily Fuller and Francis Plus Wilson, um, Dr. Francis Plus Wilson, they told us with an ISIS paper and the consultation of the um, white supremacy, they told, they told us in their particular book that these particular facets of life was being controlled by white supremacy. They didn't give us the names. The names came um, based on um, a person by the name of John Collins or or oh, Todd, um, um, John, um, Todd, in which that was part of the um, Collins family, in which that he came out in the um, late 70s, um, during the time of Jimmy Carter, in which that he started breaking down um, being part of the Illuminati family. And supposedly he became a Christian, converted to Catholicism, or, you know, Protestant, I should say, not Catholicism, but the Protestant movement, Christian. Um, all of it is Christian, and um, actually it's all up in the control of the Pope, for those who don't realize it or not. You know, of course, the Pope controls all ecclesiastical law, and that's what is coming from um, the Bible or portions of the Bible or coming from the Quran. That's why we have to go back before him, you know, and institute the Coptic laws in which that developed um, the erotic, which is the um, actual script of the ancient Egyptians known as the Metsunetis. It's stemming from the Kushites. From out of Ethiopia, because they actually had Christianity, as it was called, 300 years prior to the Vatican, the structure of the Vatican and the Papal States. Before that. All right? Before that, um, before the um, Catholic formation, as we say, of the, of the Popery. I can't say before the papal state itself, you know, because that became incorporated um, in 1914, actually, um, based on um, what Noble Dr- Prophet Noble Dr- Ali did in 1913, all right? So that's something else in which that um, people don't speak about, how the Quran is 73% of the Bible and the other 27% is from the Apocrypha, from the um, – um, the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden, as well as also from the um, um, Advin, um, the, uh, um, the Advin um, Vesta, which is the Zoroastrian text. And you can compare all three of these particular books for the scriptures in which that um, are in the Quran, and you can see where these particular um, passages are derived from. All right, but I won't get too much into that. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that at a later time, all right? Um, this information goes a little bit deeper, you know, because we had um, Professor Walter Williams on some time ago, and he got into the historical origin of Islam, um, but didn't have time to go deep, deep, as um, I know that I wanted him to go into it as far as dealing with um, particular concepts. But we're going to go into that at a later time in order to show you the connection between um, Christianity and Islam, Judaism, and how they all are derived from the ancient Semitic belief system in which that we actually did a radio show based on some of it 
It was called the metaphysical um, metaphysical um, decoding of the world major religion. And we went over into some of that information. But we're being particularly geared towards um, the squashing or the extinguishing of our life component. And according to Dr. Phil Valentine, Bible Phil Valentine L, he said something um, intriguing years ago in which he said that not only are they attempting to interface with your genetic coding, but also control the genetic coding so that you will have to incarnate back here as a slave over and over again up under their particular control. And this is also part of um, these particular uh, genetically altered food and, you know, and all of these particular things are being geared towards. Because remember, they want to be able to, um, they study cryogenics. I remember in North Carolina, we went to a, quote, unquote, Illuminati meeting. And, um, of course, we weren't supposed to be up in there. But we was on um, seven of us. It was about seven of us. And um, we sat all the way at the back. And we was in there for less than 10 minutes. And the guy wasn't even finished with his speech. As a matter of fact, he was one of the um, advisors to Ronald Reagan um, administration. And they was talking about cryogenics. They was talking about um, assassinations of African presidents. They were talking about all types of things. All right, when we got to the African president, we found that keenly interesting because by that, because this was a, I think it was a Friday, no, it was a Saturday. By that Monday, it actually was done. All right, so, um, you know, as they um, built space stations, you know, we play with PlayStation, you know, and that's the problem. We don't take this information serious enough. You know, we take it, you know, with a grain of salt, or we take it to the levels where, oh, it sounds incredible, it sounds deep. And that's about as far as what we go with it. But as far as the actual practice, you know, and the development of up to your higher self, you know, which means moving a kundalini energy up from the inter- um, interpersonal consciousness to the interpersonal consciousness to life consciousness, subconsciousness, super consciousness, magnetic consciousness, infinite consciousness, up to the crown area. Um, very few actually do the work. Very few. And that is a serious problem. Because you need more um, masters and you need more healers in this. So um, people need to start taking this thing seriously. You know, stop being a surface dweller. You know, just looking at things from the surface and not doing some um, in-depth research in order to find out what's really taking place on planet Earth and how your life aspect is attempting to be controlled, but also how there's loopholes in that control, and you can find those loopholes and practice those loopholes on a daily basis. Like, for example, they don't control the sky every single day. You can know that because when you go outside, um, especially in the morning time, the sky is blue, not hazy. If you come out there after the um, afternoon and it's hazy, you might as well go back inside because that means that they already dropped the chemtrail, especially if there's no clouds in the sky and it's just hazy. So you definitely want to... Um, work with those particular um, components. And when you go outside, you know, you want to um, study certain techniques, like we always say, um, Qigong and Tai Chi. And the reason why we speak of these particular sciences as far as being able to activate and increase the life force principle within each and every one of you is because, and within each and every one of us, is because it's real simple. You know, if you absorb the energy through your melanocyte, through your black hole, which is your skin, 
or through your melanin, you're able to store that energy within your particular dancing end, which is known as your heaven. For your lower heaven, which is your navel chakra, is where you store the energy at or right below it, and that energy is what increases your longevity, is what increases your life component. If you can master that, you can actually gain immortality. You can live more than 200 years or more. That's what is known as the return of the ancient ones, in which that we would be able to um, have that particular science once again. And age gives you the ability in order to develop yourself to the spiritual level of your golden body, in which that you can actually master it while living. Sometimes it don't spark until you pass within the three days time span. And only thing is left is um, flakes of skin, nail, and actually what happens is that you dematerialize and you are in your golden body. This is the highest, uh, one of the highest aspects of immortality. And you can reach these levels by absorbing more and more energy. Of course, you got to develop. These, of course, these techniques will help, help you have to develop your nervous system so that you can handle um, this particular current. So you start slow. You do particular breathing exercises. One particular exercise in which that synergizes the brain is called alternating nostril breath technique. Was that you would close your right nostril, breathe the left nostril for a count of four, hold both nostrils closed for a count of 16, then breathe out through your right nostril for a count of eight and then reverse it. That particular technique synergizes both hemispheres of your brain, the left and the right hemisphere of your brain. In other words, it um, takes your logical mind, rational mind, into your creative mind, into your abstract mind. And that connection between the two becomes more um, authentic, becomes more uh, prevalent. In other words, there's no such thing as writing blocks and all these particular things because your creative center, which is, which is in the right hemisphere of the brain, is always activated and open. If you take the energy and you absorb it through your back of your heart, into your heart chakra, that develops the aspects of love. Your heart is one of the highest magnetized organs in your body. That's why your arms are an extension of your heart. So hence, with the science of healing, your temporal lobes in your brain is what channel energy into your heart, out through your arms, into your hands, and transmit that energy into others as it comes down through your crown chakra. That happens through your temporal lobe. So the other area is with the um, third heaven, is within your pineal gland, which is actually between the eyebrows or right above it. There's seven eyes. It's known as the eyes of Allah or the eyes of Ur Ra, which is Heru Ur, which is Heru the Elder or Horus the Elder, which is the form of Ra. Ra is the eldest god. Heru is nothing more than the um, incarnation of Ra, which is a form of Asa, his father who are in heaven. It's talking about the soul embedded inside of the pineal gland. And our set has to come and resurrect our star, or Ra. And she do so by moving up through the seven caverns, or caves, known as the seven chakras. And she is able to um, initiate or, or cause that spark of life because she herself, as well as or saw, or both, half a sleep. Or both have a sleep. So you have to awaken or set first, which is the Kundalini, and you have to raise her up through the seven chakras. And at the seventh chakra, or the seventh um, cave, which is called the Cave of Brahma, the Sanskrit teaching, 
um, or far sits there, which is the soul, waiting for the Holy Spirit, which is our set, which is the Kundalini, which is a form of Sekhmat, to awaken Ra, which is also our star, from out of his slumber. But how do you awaken a Kundalini? It comes through, the quickest way actually comes through the sexual principle. And that means with a person in which that you endear deeply, that you love deeply. That's what establishes the connection. Just lust or sex out of just having it don't establish those connections. Actually, you'll end up losing energy instead of creating energy. Then it's utilized in order to open and awaken the kundalini. So, brothers, as you come, you'll feel drained. So actually, you're not coming, you're going. This is, um, you'll feel drained also. So, you have to be careful about the science of sex. That's why you need to study Tantra Kriya Yoga. The excellent book is by my teacher, Sanyada Saraswati, grandmaster, who wrote the book Jewel in the Lotus. And matter of fact, we just seen him this weekend. Fall up there. All right? So, um, up in New York at the New Life Expo. So, we want you to get that book and support Grandmaster Sanyata because that is one of the most revolutionary books ever to... Um, that I've ever come across, and we can actually teach the principles and the exercises of awakening the kundalini and moving it and uh, moving the energy up the spinal column, and actually bypassing, um, in a sense, the chakra system. Because a lot of times we have a lot of um, guilt, depression, disappointment, anger, frustration, envy, lust. Jealousy stored up within these particular chakras. And if the kundalini gets stuck or large within these particular chakras, then it can be problem, blockages. And it has to burn through what is called the ethereal um, thread in order to become free. But sometimes that burning through the ethereal um, thread hurts. And it's projected through the dream. It's projected through... Um, ailments from which that possibly can occur within the body. You have kundalini symptoms, as they are called, back spasm, um, jerking motion, dizziness, vomiting, nausea, um, blurry vision, all right? And you can have all these particular symptoms. You go to the doctor. They're diagnosing you with something else. Oh, you might get diabetes. But that's because the kundalini is large at your solar plexus. And what you need to do is the solar plexus massage. And that was one of the techniques in which that Master Sanyata taught this past Sunday. Also, when you do the alternate nostril breath technique, um, you'll focus your energies at the solar plexus, and that helps clear um, a lot of the um, energy in which they become large there. All right? The solar plexus is actually a nestle of bundles of nerves in which that um, is your nervous system, your sympathetic um, nervous system. And you also have your parasympathetic nervous system. And your solar plexus, what happens is that um, it taps into your spleen and your pancreas. And metaphysically, if you're disappointed and you um, don't feel good about life itself and you, and you lose the zest for life, then you can develop what's called diabetes. That's the metaphysical cause. All right, so 
Um, you want to be able to um, know this information and be able to practice it. So in Reiki, what you would do is once you're initiated into Reiki 1, you can actually practice. Actually, don't even have to be initiated. You can actually rub your hands together like Mr. Miyagi, like on Karate Kid. Rub your hands quickly, cross each other, slap them, shake them, and you'll feel the tingling, and that is the chi energy. And you can actually place it over top of your solar plexus. And you can leave it there for up to 45 minutes in order to heal that area. If you have diabetes, high blood pressure, you have to do two areas, your thymus, your um, thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, which is your throat area, as well as also your kidneys. Within Qigong, you can tap on your kidneys or rub them, massage them. Kidneys are actually one of the um, easiest organs in the body in order to heal. They listen very well. One of the things that you can say is, I love you. Well, I love me. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Or I apologize. Thank you. All right? And you can actually you can say this to all of your organs on a daily basis, starting with your heart. All right? Um, another good brother, the brother um, um, Hank, um, who um, we also met. This um, past week, but we already knew Brother Hank beforehand. He used to come to um, some of my lectures and um, set up outside. But Brother Hank is a good brother. Um, he, does, he deals with magnetic healing. And um, he gave us some good information this weekend, also. You know, so um, Brother Hank rising. So check Brother Hank out. He, um, he All right, especially when you have any um, lectures. You can have your with your throat area for 25 minutes or so, as well as also on the kidney for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And that helps with high blood pressure. All right. For cancer, you can do a whole body cleansing as well as also Reiki along each of the particular endocrine glands or organs, starting at the crown, the third eye, the throat, the heart or thymus gland, the solar plexus, which is the spleen, pancreas, the navel, the genitals. Okay. Now, that is just for some of the most um, diseases which that we're being plagued with: diabetes, blood pressure, cancer. Right. Um, for the prostate, um, when you follow the prostate, you will want to contract your anal muscles and perineum and do that 300 times a day. Brothers, you need to be doing that 300 times a day regardless. Pulling up that area, pulling it up, pulling it up. 300 times a day or more. Especially, brothers, if you're not shooting your semen three feet or further. That means you have a weak prostate gland. And doing these particular exercises help with mastering that. It also cures hemorrhoids when you're dealing with that in the anal area. Rectum. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, person who has lupus, 
We have the digital thymus gland, which is connected specifically to the connected particularly to the lymphatic system, the lignoid. And you would actually take your hands and place it over right above your heart, right below your throat chakra. It's about an inch or so below your throat chakra and right above your heart. That is your thymus gland. You feel like a little um, knot there. Actually, at one time, that was the pump for your lymphatic system as you were younger, and it was larger than it is now as an adult. As an adult, it becomes atrophied, just like the pineal gland does. And sometimes it begins to calcify. Particular herbs in which that helps with that is yellow root, yellow dock, which is um, yellow root is called golden seal, or yellow dock, yam. And also putting your hands over that particular area for 25 to 45 minutes daily. Sometimes you want to practice these exercises three times a day, morning, afternoon, evening, before you go to bed. It removes blockages, stress, disappointment, depression. This is the metaphysics of life. This is what we're talking about tonight. So hopefully you're paying attention to writing this information down. All right? We got classes dealing with this information. We got to go further in depth than this. This is nothing compared to what we go in depth uh, with for three months. Three months, we certify you in Reiki, Reiki 1, Reiki 2, Reiki 3, and that's within Ushi Reiki, that's within Tibetan Reiki, and that's within um, also um, Shekel Reiki, which is Egyptian or ancient Kemetic or Tamaranian Reiki, or Raka, as it is called. Shekel Raka, or Sekmat Raka. And we certify you within all three forms of these Reiki, as well as also um, dealing with the universal life principle, as well as also within prana. You become a pranic healer. So that means that you're able to instruct in pranic healing. In the aspect of pranayama, which is actually qigong. Reiki actually is the beginning stages, is an aspect of pranayama, as well as also it is an aspect of qigong. Qigong means breast development or cultivating your life force, or breath work. That's what Qigong means. For the more, real simple. Chapter 2 of the Holy Quran, Circle 7, says you that the holy breath is what brings peace and harmony. Also, the unification to Allah, which is one higher self, comes through the master of this holy breath. That's actually all Jesus symbolized within your scriptures. That's why in the book of Acts, the first chapter or two, he breathed on his disciples and he received the Holy Spirit. In other words, he breathed on them and he activated their thinking. Because that is the same stuff in which that was that entered into us during the time when God breathed into the doctrines of man and made man a living soul. So the breath is intimately connected to the soul. And it's true. But if you are not breathing, you have no more episodes or life experiences. It is your breath in which that um, etches your life or the events or the situation or um, the particular things in which that happens to you is because and based on your breath. That is what etches the memory, the soul. And if you don't master the component of the of the um of the breath, 
which is actually the holy, um, the holy breath, which is also the holy soul, what happened is that, according to the ancient Kemetic teachings, on Judgment Day, which is the day in which that you supposedly die, and you have a panoramic view of all your life experiences in a backward position or backward view, what happens is that um, at that judgment time, your soul actually judges itself, which is actually you, the real you, not the flesh. But it does um, the attitude, the guilt, the anger, the frustration, all these things are etched upon your breath. Your thought is etched upon the breath. Your speech is etched upon the breath. Hence the word made flesh. The breath is the most important component to life. You go without food for a month, water, two weeks, breath, three minutes. Don't believe me? Try it. You got an ambulance for me. I'll call 911. Matter of fact, we'll call National Motor Club Company for you. They deal with funerals. They, matter of fact, they give you up to $8,000 for funerals. Okay? So, you have to master the signs of breath. That's what deals with the um, prana or the chi or key energy or ra, or shekel, that power, that force, netter. You want to become a netter or a netterite, which is part of the netter rules, you have to master the science of breath. And if you're not working on your breath on a daily basis, then there's something wrong with you. You need to work on at least 20 minutes, and that's minimal, a day. If you can work for someone for eight hours, I really feel that you can work on your breath for eight hours and more. And working on your breath is simply doing the particular exercises that we spoke about, the alternate nostril breath technique, in which that, of course, you can do 20 um, for each nostril. And there's other techniques in which that we've spoken about um, on here before. Practice some of these exercises to get your life force up. All right? So, um, these are some of the things that we need to master as part of the metaphysics of life. Now, for those that don't understand metaphysics, it's real simple. Uh, meta means basically beyond. Physics means physical, so beyond the physical. But it's not just beyond the physical. It's actually metaphysics deals in ontology and philosophy, which means deals with the science of life itself, the components of life, what makes life up. The ancient Egyptians called it Ra. The Indo Kush, which is Tam ancient Tamil or the Dravidian, from pre Dravidian. Or the prana. All right, the shame dynasty referred to it as Ra also. Or shock. Which the Kundalini is in the image of lightning. It does make a rumble. That's why the Bible is about the seven thunders. In Hawaii, it's called Kohuna Mana. As in Mana, that spells Mana. So, in the Bible, it tells you about the Holy Spirit, in which they tell you about the Father, the Son, 
And then they transform the mother principle, which is the Kundalini, into the Holy Spirit. Or within the Catholic or Catholicism, the Holy Mother Mary, the Mother of God. The word Mary means she or matrix, the Maya, the Holy Maya, the Holy Matrix, the Holy Sea. And the reason why it's sea because the color blue is deceptive. As a matter of fact, the water is, um, appears to be blue because of the sky, which is uh, reflected off the rays from the sun. Matter of fact, they asked Harvard students that question, that um, that particular question.